Ashton Vision Prep. What's up, y'all? My name is Ashton Hill, and I attend Vision Prep. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mackenzie, and I attend Vision Prep. And, and welcome, welcome to the Do South Memphis, Memphis Monthly Podcast. Podcast. Do South is a show highlighting Memphians making a difference in the life of youth. We will cover topics in the news that, that affect us and let our voices be heard on these matters. Lastly, we have an entertainment segment, What's Hot, What's Not, Pass the Ox Court, a music segment, and That's What's Up segment. Do South is recorded at the South Branch Library on 1929 South 3rd Street. On this episode of Do South Memphis, we will be interviewing V101 radio personality and host of Verbally Effective Podcast, Ina Esco. Let's welcome her to our show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Are you a native Memphian? I sure can. I am not a native Memphian. Memphian. I am actually from Beaumont, Texas. Do you guys know where Beaumont, Texas is? No, that's kind of where um, nope. Beyonce. She's kind of where Beyonce, right? So Houston, Texas is near Beaumont, Texas, maybe about 45 minutes away. So I'm from Beaumont, Texas. I've been in Memphis since 1995. My dad is retired Army. So we moved here when he was still uh, active in the military. So uh, we moved to Millington. I am a Millington Central High School graduate. I attended Millington just my senior year. Um, I played sports while in high school. I was a volleyball player, all state. Um, when I graduated from Millington, I attended Lamoine on College. You guys familiar with Lamoine on College? That's yes. our school class. Yes. 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 Okay. L-O-C. L-O-C. So I played volleyball for Lamoine. I received an academic and an athletic scholarship my first year as a freshman. Um, I played uh, volleyball again my sophomore year, but I wanted to be grown, and I got into a sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. That's where my grandma it, is. It's her grandmother, what? my soror. My grandma and AKA my aunt. Pink and green. Okay. Okay. The pretty girl. Alpha girls. Kappa Alpha. <laughs> yeah. Alpha, <laughs> Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I, can't say I grew that. up in 1908. Yes, yeah, so you know all about the pink and green, right? I can't, yes. I can't see that. You'll learn about it. So uh, when I joined, AKA, I didn't want to play sports anymore because I was so busy, right? Um, I became the president of the chapter. Um, I was crowned Miss Lamorno in college in 2001. So I was like the campus queen for HBCU in Memphis, the only HBCU in Memphis, so that was fun. Um, once I graduated, I worked in corporate America. I also started radio, though, my uh, senior year in college. I started working at Hot 107. You guys familiar with Hot 107? Yes. So that was my first radio gig. So I stayed there a couple of years, then I went to Clear Channel, which is now iHeartRadio. <gasps> That's my favorite. So I work with oh. iHeartRadio. I was on K97 for about 15 years. K97. Yes, K97, hip hop, rap, some R&B. Yeah, that was me. So I've done morning show. I've done. Um, I've been Steve a producer. Not Steve Harvey. That's a whole nother station. <laughs> That's another station. Oh, roasty. That but I also cool. worked at that particular broadcasting company, too. Ha. Huh. Yes, it was huh. Citadel. What so, do you mean? Well, they are different radio broadcasting networks. Yeah, so like, I've been in radio for about 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I just I thought you got experience. I don't think I can hold, yeah, I got I quite a bit of experience. Job for that long. Well, you probably could if you Maybe loved a doing teacher. it. You think so? Yeah. You, it's just got to be something you love. You She's have to love it. Mad. That's no, right. No, no, no. I love radio. Um, yeah. What schools did you at- attend? Well, like I mentioned, I went to. I graduated from Millington Central High School, but before that. Uh, in my junior year in high school, I attended Raleigh, Egypt for one year. And then we moved on base uh, with the military with my father being in the Army. And I went to Millington. And then I went to Lemoyne in college. What inspired you to get into radio? Oh, we. You know what? I was a senior at Lemoyne. And like I mentioned, AKA, we had parties and everything like that. And one of the DJs was Devin Steele. You guys familiar with Devin Steele? Yes. yes. So everybody knew Devin. He DJed all of our AKA parties. And I just went up to him because I was Miss Lemoyne. I said, hey, how can I get on the radio? And he was like, if you're serious, 
I want you to come to the radio station on Monday morning and talk to the program director. I was like, okay. So I went up to the radio station that Monday, spoke with the program director, told him why I thought I should be on the radio. And the experience with being Miss Lemoyne helped me because I was a great communicator. So they didn't start me off on the air, though. They started me off as a research coordinator. So I used to go to different music stores talking to people about why they were purchasing music. And I probably did that for three months, and then they gave me the opportunity to be on the radio, on air. Yay. What is the best part of your job as a DJ? I think the best part is being able to listen to new music and to talk to the masses about it. It's like you're on the forefront of what's breaking as far as music is concerned and keeping them updated on you know, what the artists have going on. And also, while you're on the air, you know, you're live on the air, so you're sharing with them what's going on in the community as well. Do you have a favorite interview that had a listening, lasting impact on you? Hmm. One of my favorite interviews was with Tamar Braxton. You guys know Tamar? Not really. Tamar? Tamar. From the Braxtons? I don't know who Tamar I do not know. Tamar? Tamar? You call her Tamar? <laughs> there used to be a Braxton. So you know it's a lot of sisters, right? Tony Braxton, Tamar Braxton, yes, all Tamar. of the sisters. But um, she was in town while they were taping their reality show. And, she, and just as boisterous as she is on TV, she is just the same in person. And I was pregnant at the time with my second son. And so she was like, girl, you look so cute, pregnant, blah, blah, blah. She's like, I need to send you some of my maternity clothes. It was like she was just like really jokey, jokey. But she did not send me them clothes. So Aww. she made me mad. But um, we had a nice little chat. Um, you know, she was like very funny and down to earth. So I remember her the most. Can you tell us a little bit about your podcast and how did you get started? Sure. So the name of my podcast is the Verbally Effective Podcast. And I created it in January of 2018. And the podcast, it's an interview style podcast. It's weekly. So every week I interview guests and this particular podcast, it intersects art culture, politics, entertainment. So a lot of people that are movers and shakers in the city of Memphis, they come on the podcast and they talk about their journey. They talk about, you know, their highs and their lows of their pursuits and, you know, what fuels their passion. So I'm getting people to come on the podcast to talk about their journey. And um, it's doing pretty good so far. So I'm headed on two years now. Got a question for you. What is the SXSW Music Festival? The South by Southwest Music Festival? Okay, the South by Southwest Music Festival is a huge festival held yearly in Austin, Texas. And it is a, it's a, it's not a music festival, it's a creative festival for different people that are creatives in the areas of, it could be media, music, things of that nature. And the Verbally Effective podcast was chosen to showcase at next year's podcast. Next year's event, I'm sorry. Yes, that's a big deal. I'm really excited. Like out of over 10,000 people, we were selected. Oh, Little O is from 10, Memphis. 000? Yes. Oh. So I'm praying that this festival will take the Verbally Effective podcast to a national platform. Really? Cool. I got another question. Okay. <laughs> what advice can you give a young person who is interested in getting into radio broadcasting? Well, um, I could say that if a young person is interested in radio uh, broadcasting, I would be very, very into researching music and artists. You have to know a lot about the artists because that's what makes up the programming on the station. So are you guys music lovers? Yes. yes. Okay, so that's number one, right? If you're going to get into radio, you have to love the music. 
and you have to be an effective communicator. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys are pretty effective communicators because yes. you're doing this podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Talk a lot. Right. And, but, but nowadays, I would say that um, you have so many options now. If you want to get into radio broadcasting, you can do that. You can get with iHeart to see if you can do an internship, or you can do your own podcast and have your own platform. Just you know, it's, it's that different now, and I think it's easier now. It's an easier gateway now because of technology. AJ's going to be our AJ editor. can help. He's going to be our editor. He's going to be the reporter, producer, engineer. Okay, I need AJ help too with some things we're going to talk about. Is the equipment expensive? Um, You know what? I utilize the iHeart equipment as of now. So I am looking into purchasing equipment. Um, we do a lot of... Um, on location podcast. So right now I get engineers to come on board and help me with the sound now. So I haven't purchased my own equipment, but that is something that I'm looking into. Thank you for taking the time out to speak with us about what you do. If you don't mind, we'd like for you to stick around. Now let's get into our other segments. For this episode of Newsworthy, we will be discussing the recent impeachment news of President Donald Trump. Recently in the news, a whistleblower, someone who reports knowledge of illegal activity within an organization, came forward to say President Trump urged the president from Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. It is believed that Trump is using his power to commit illegal activities while in the White House. Some people believe Trump should be impeached, while others believe it will make our country look bad. Do you think presidents should be held accountable for their actions or should they get a pass because they hold the highest power in the country? I think the presidents should be held accountable for their actions. Yes. Yes. So you guys agree agree with me? Facts. Yes. I had to look up impeachment because I didn't know what it meant. And I guess, uh, well, maybe he might be put out of office. That's, That's impeachment. Oh, okay. I don't think there's been a president so far that have been through the impeachment process that has actually been booted out, maybe one. But um, when you think about even, remember Bill Clinton? Remember that name? He went through an impeachment hearing, and he was still in office. And so we got, what, one more year with Donald Trump, right? Yes. So just think it's December. It's it's, it's almost December now. So... I don't know, but yeah, I want him impeached, if you're asking me my opinion. He's making poor choices. Very poor choices, Ashton. Anyone on the news every single day. Yes. I concur. Get it together. So, get it together. Before I was interrupted, was (laughs) I think that any line of power, any person in power, should be held accountable for their actions because. Normal civilians are held accountable for their actions, so any line of power, any person in line of power, should be held accountable. We should too. all be treated that's the just, same. That's You're just common humans. sense. That's just logic. Yes, and if they they are the highest form of power, they should be setting a good example, right? Yes. Okay. It's like and they're not setting Trump examples is definitely for little kids. Not now. Right. It's not cool. Not cool at all. <laughs> He's not in 2019, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> For this episode of What's Hot, What's Not, we will be discussing the recent craze over Popeye's chicken sandwich. Mm. <sighs> chicken. Jesus. This new chicken sandwich has prompted memes, ha- memes, hashtags, and plenty of selfies on social media since it launched this summer. There have been long lines, sandwich shortages, and even fights to break out over this popular chicken sandwich. Just recently, a man was fatally stabbed in a Maryland Popeye's after a fight broke out over the sandwich. Oh. Humans, what do y'all have going? There is also there is also a big debate whether the sandwich is better than some of its competitors, such as Chick Fil A. Have any of you tried Popeye's chicken sandwich? No, no. I, I don't know. even eat. Popeyes. I don't want no, no part of it. I've tried nope, it. I just don't like their chicken. It has too much fat in it. I, I like their fat. Can't do it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going <laughs> there. After I'm the a fat. Chick Fil A person. I swear. Yeah, I like that. I after like after the I fact, like, like their McDonald's chicken is not crispy. Huh? McDonald's is all I right. love Popeye's chicken, but it's like not crispy. again, I'm from Beaumont, Texas, so it's nothing but Popeye's out there. You nope. know how Beyonce loves Popeye's? Yes. I know what she's I talking not about. Crispy. I don't really know about Straight Beyonce because I don't like I don't search her up like it's every other crispy. Queen Bee person does. I'm not 
No. I bet she loves the sandwich. I tried the sandwich one time, and I stood in that drive through line for 20 minutes, and that was enough oh for me. Gosh. But it was good. Time. The worst thing I hate good. in drive through lines is when those mean teenagers are always just getting an attitude with you for no reason. Mm-hmm. And it's Bro. like, I didn't do anything to you. You <laughs> endure that my, to me. You, you endure just, that? I'm legit drive past them. <laughs> I wanted to try that sandwich, and it was really good. But not good enough for me to go back and sit in that line. I'm a Chick-fil-A McDonald's person. Yeah, I yeah. Got me but you know what's good? You know what's good about it? It's a big piece of chicken. It's bigger than the Chick-fil-A chicken. And the bread is so so moist and buttery. Like that's what bread. you, that's what I you like don't want. Bread. The, bread, the bread, the bread got me. Moist bread. The bread. <laughs> Weird. I like Chick Fil A's bread. <laughs> I, I gotta have the good bread meat combo. I'm sorry. Moist bread. That's mm. I mean, buttery, yummy. Ew. Yeah, the like, buttery bread like by itself. I'm gonna just like dry bread because, like. No, moist bread is not. Dry bread is moist so hard bread is to not swallow. an option. No, it's not. Not unless you chew it thoroughly. <laughs> if you don't good. chew it thoroughly, it's gonna be hard to swallow. If you, yeah, and that piece of chicken was so big, <laughs> so you're gonna be chewing for days. But you know what? I think it's good, but it's not that good for people to be getting killed over. That yeah. that is nope. just horrible. It's the news that I heard about cool. that. Again with the people, not in 2019. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this chicken sa- chicken sandwich is so popular? I think it was because it was something new. And, you know, Popeye's, you know, the, I guess they, they're known for spicy chicken, New Orleans-style chicken, but this was something new, and we just had to be a part of the phenomenon of something new. So I think that's why it was so popular. How does it compare to other popular chicken restaurants? Like I said, I like Chick Fil A, but um, I think that Popeye's chicken now. sandwich is better. Come okay. on now, bro. Okay, let's just get this straight. Let's just let's just clear this up real quick. Popeye's, yep. bro. Popeye's bread <laughs> is not okay. trash. Trash. But you guys have you have not tried it, so you can't say I don't want to try it. The Last chicken is I ate Popeyes and it smelled funny. No. The I first time I ate Popeyes, I threw up. Okay. Nah, no, buddy. Okay. Oh my gosh. See, I'm not trying it again. I suggest you guys no. try it out before you make a decision, though. I did try it. You did. I'm not gonna try that because I already nasty. made my decision. But it oh, tasted, I thought you said you didn't try. It tasted okay, but it smelled funny. Oh. I tasted Chick Fil A chicken sandwich. That was good. Yup, yeah. that's the hit. <laughs> that's <laughs> the hit. McDonald's that made sandwich. the touch. That was good. Yeah. I don't know about Popeyes. That's a whole different breed. Try it. Whole different breed of dog. Try it out, Madison. <laughs> Popeyes is a different breed. A good breed. A bad breed. A yummy breed. Like poodles. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a bad breed, like poodles. Sound like it till you try it. Poodles. Poodles are all right. Okay. What is poodles? Poodles. They're dogs. dogs. It's a dog. Oh. They're really fluffy oh. dogs. Oh, you meant like a good breed as in a dog. <laughs> I thought it was like a poodles chicken spot now. I was like, what, what? is poodles? Okay, I got you. <laughs> I, got I think you. I would want to eat at poodles. Yeah. They serve that's, poodles. That's pretty sad. <laughs> they cut up poodles and turned them into sandwiches. Y'all need to try that sandwich. Ashton and Madison, try that sandwich. <laughs> What? I have with a little poodle on the side. Down my face because I'm laughing too hard. <laughs> a little poodle on the side. <laughs> what Ooh, artists are you listening to right now? What hot songs are out? I love that new Kanye Jesus is King album. Have you guys heard it? Yes. No. no, no. Not at all. Yep. My like dad Kanye is listening to I it the other will. day. I love it. No. no, no. I'm also listening about. to the baby. You guys like the yep. baby? Yes. I don't like the Black album. Period. Kirk. You want to know something? What did y'all with Miss Kanye West period. wasn't there when his kids got baptized. Oh did you know that? No. Well, That's I sad. knew that because I watched the news. I watched ABC. ABC. That's tough. <laughs> right, but I still like his music. So He's I'm sad. listening to Kanye, yeah, the baby, and an R&B artist named Snow Allegra. Oh, okay. She kind of reminds me of Sade. Who you listening to? Um, No one. I listen to I listen to... Like, I just listen to whatever my dad puts on in the radio. 
some old people music. You listen some to old her. school. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. old school too. But I, 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 too. I like yeah, yeah. Me too. and my friend were singing okay. um that song, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. Yeah. Yes. And this dude, he was like, y'all listen to old school music. That's not even like, that old. That's not even old. <laughs> That's this year. And I didn't even say boy with B O Y. I said boy B O I. Boy. Mm. <laughs> so what kind of music do you boy. guys like? Um, um, I'll show you. I'll show you. No. Why? I listen. Did you, you don't say Ashton? I. I like um, old school such as. Slash old school music or old people music, <laughs> and music. and That's I like I this artist who, who's pretty hot right now. He his name is Emily Chopper. Oh, my son loves him. My fourteen year old like loves everyone, him. Everyone, all the dudes, all just, boys. What's your favorite Emily Chopper bars. song? I like Shadow Flow too. What is it called? Shadow Flow too, and I like okay. Camelot too. The new song he just made. Okay. You seeing what I listen to? I don't gotta say nothing. I listen to Ariana Grande, Shawn Mendes, and James Bruh. Arthur. There you go. Okay, they cool too. I like them. She saw what I listen to. Y'all want to look? Y'all can too. Because you want to look? You know some songs I right here. Ashley, you want to look? No. Okay. She like a boogie with the hoodie. Yes, Ariana I love a boogie Grande. With the <laughs> For our That's What's Up segment, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Ooh, what yes. are some of our your family traditions for this holiday? Also, what is your favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving dinner? Spaghetti. What? Turkey mm. and dressing. <laughs> Where did that come from? And What's my favorite sauce? thing to eat? Spaghetti. Bruh. We talk about Thanksgiving. <laughs> What's my favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving? Spaghetti. Bro, there literally has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I eat spaghetti at Thanksgiving. I don't know about you. <laughs> Just turkey and dressing. I love you. No, no, we have turkey honey and baked ham. My grandma, we um, have turkey and dressing. I go, she makes homemade rice krispies. Oh, <laughs> I like macaroni and I like cheese. Pie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys have family traditions? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, spaghetti. We just yeah. eat Bruh. together what is like a good eat? family, and then we that's eat. our family tradition, not yours. Well, you know what, my family tradition it used to be I would me and my family would travel to Beaumont, Texas, to be with my grandparents, but they passed over the years. So now we go to Sardis, Mississippi. Um, that's where my husband is from, and we eat with their family. And my favorite dish is my mother-in-law's duck dressing. It is so fine. Duck. It tastes like chicken, but it is so good. She makes it homemade. You know, my mom said she said frog legs taste like chicken. It Wait, does. What? Our, our teacher, Ms. Richardson, what you told us something about corn casserole. Oh, corn casserole. I was like, fire. what? She was I like, it's it. just like corn pudding. I was like, what is corn pudding? <laughs> so you have you cream corn? <laughs> yes. It's a like that. AJ is looking in disgust. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, well, I don't want to be in this conversation because I'm the editor. I don't have to talk about nothing. But you know what? Um, also, my family is Creole, so we have a lot of different Creole dishes that that I still make around mm. uh, Thanksgiving time. Uh, crawfish etouffee. Have you yes. guys heard of that? I nope. like crawfish. I don't know what that last I mean, part was. It's like a stew. I just eat fish. Just yep. Fish. I like, yeah. I like shrimp. crawfish, shrimp. Uh, crab gumbo, legs. Gum like gumbo. I don't, yeah. I don't really associate. Um, isn't <laughs> the that only from, time uh, I ever hear about that was New when Orleans? I watch Princess Yeah, that's and where the it originated. Frogs. Same. Yeah, so I kind of mix in some of my Creole dishes with uh, when I bring over things to cook for Thanksgiving. I'm, I don't. What well, we did? She let us eat gumbo. She made some, and then she brought it to school. I mean, for Thanksgiving. Did it have uh, the whole seafood in it? Just comes to the same old yep. house. Mm-hmm. Where everyone grew up. Mm-hmm. We want to thank our guest, radio personality, Ina Esco, for taking the time out to visit with us today. And we want to give a shout-out to our sponsors, Memphis Library Foundation and Cloud 901. Make sure you come and visit the South Branch Library at 1929 South 3rd Street for free programs, books, and computer needs. Also, subscribe to our podcast show, South Branch Library on SoundCloud. Are there any final words from our guests? 
Well, I would like to say thank you guys for inviting me to the Do South podcast. This has been really fun meeting you all and talking with you all. And some final words I would like to say is to find out what your gift is. Do you guys know what your gift is? Yep, football. Um, football. I'm so Being cold. smart. Being smart. Reading Harry Potter. Reading Harry Potter. Oh my well, my gift is the gift of communication. So I know that. And since I figured that out, I've been using my gift, and God has been blessing me in numerous ways. There have been so many opportunities since I started my Verbally Effective podcast. I, I just, I'm just, you know how they say, overflow. My cup is overflow. Yeah. Yes. That's how I feel right now, and I'm so blessed. And thank you guys so much for inviting me. Well, one more thing to say to these people. Get in 2019, people. Okay, there we go. Peace.